It's at this point the destination started turning a little odd. Yeah, there's people in Brazil coming back. All right, welcome back, y'all. We find ourselves on a bit of a road trip today. We're heading through Windsor to Detroit, Michigan. For what? Well, we're going shopping. We're not just doing any shopping. For the guys that watch my channel, we're going to Harbor Freight, also known as the Princess Auto of Canada. But we don't have a Harbor Freight here, and their tools are a lot cheaper than here. Unless, of course, you're buying DeWalt, or you're buying Milwaukee, then you gotta go take out a small mortgage on your house just to pay for it. Which is why we're going to Harbor Freight. For you ladies that watch the channel, if there are any ladies that watch the channel, we're heading to Hobby Lobby and Target. Of course, if you ladies are into tools, then you can come to Harbor Freight. And dudes, if you're into Hobby Lobby and Target, you can you know where I'm going with this. We have now made it to Windsor. There's two ways to get across the border from Windsor into Detroit. One is the tunnel, the other is the Ambassador Bridge. Uh, tunnel's sketchy at best. Ambassador Bridge, well, it's been known to have some parts fall off it, so we're going to take the lesser of two evils, and uh, we're going to take the tunnel. <laughs> because somebody doesn't like the bridge. Those tall buildings in the background, that is Detroit. This is Olette Avenue, and here's our turn to get to the tunnel. Here? Uh, you always, I know, you always need my card. <laughs> and they don't take cash. It's debit or credit only. Halfway through the tunnel, there's, a, there's an American flag and a Canadian flag. That's apparently the border line under the Detroit River. A little bit of history about the Windsor Detroit Tunnel. It was opened in 1930 and it's over 5,000 feet long. The Ambassador Bridge? Oh, the Ambassador Bridge was built in 1929. And let me see. So it's one year older. Uh, it's 7,500 So it's 2,000 feet longer than the tunnel. So these cars over here are going back into Canada. And they're moving awful slow, which means it's going to be a wait. Coming out of the tunnel? Not bad at all. We've seen it a lot worse than this. Okay, uh, for obvious reasons, we'll be turning the camera off as we go through customs. It's at this point, the destination started turning a little odd. All right, welcome to Detroit. Now we got to do one of the Michigan U-turns. We're on Jefferson now. We got to do a U-turn to get back to M10 so we can find I-75 South. Some of you might be thinking, oh my God, you're going Detroit shopping? I'd rather go to Detroit than Toronto or many other cities in Ontario. Detroit is much safer. Last time we've been. 
missed it. about to get on I-75 South we can stay on this road for about 36 hours and we'll go to Miami or we can get off in about 12 minutes and go to our shopping destination Miami I vote Miami mom shopping if, if we go home and pack a suitcase and then we go to Miami I'm okay with it <laughs> I want to go shopping first though. Oh. Mom called it. 12 minutes, we're getting off I-75. So in about 10 minutes from the border, we're pretty much where we need to be. Our exit was Dix Road, D-I-X. Uh, that's what road we're on right now. We're going to make a slight left up here to Eureka Road. And then we're at Harbor Freight. Whoop, whoop. Actually, boo. All right, we made it to Hobo Freight. Time for the family adventure to begin. Tell everybody you're excited without telling them you're excited. See, she's excited. What are we looking for here? Might be this. Three each drive. Explain me this. This is a three each drive ratchet for 59 bucks. Two only. So when you go by the battery, it's 50. So the battery costs as much as the tool does. Make that make sense to me. Well, we made it okay at Harbor Freight. Not as good as I wanted. I'll show you all that later, but right now, yeah, this is, uh, not Harbor Freight. We're at Here we are going to be here a while. We are only about 100 meters inside the tunnel and already traffic is stopped. Both sides though. Okay, well, it is obviously the next day. We got ourselves quite a storm brewing out there. Take a look. Uh, we really can't see the rain, but the thunder and the lightning. Our little adventure to Harbor Freight. How'd that go? Well, as you could see, they sell the tool without the battery. And then you gotta buy the battery separately, which costs as much as the tool. A little disappointing. However, did manage to get a couple of things. Picked up this uh, 3 8 by 75 foot rope. This stuff here is pretty good. It comes in a nice wrap and uh, get up to... 300 pounds I'm safe so far four dollars 99 cents next up picked up a five foot by seven foot tarp camo on one side I'll grab the green on the other can never go wrong with a tarp you always need a tarp for something you need to build a shelter you need to work on your vehicle inside the road you're laying on the side of the road you lay that down Keep you off the dirt, keep you off the wet, and uh, even put a roof over your head if you need it. And that was $4.99. Last, I picked up this here 308 piece electrical connector assortment kit. You see, we got some uh, connectors here, we got some heat shrink, we got some tie wraps. That's what it looks like here. All kinds of butt splices, spade connectors. If you're working on anything automotive or you're on a road trip somewhere i brought some of these last time we were on a road trip to texas 
Uh, it does not hurt to have any of these in the car. They don't take up a lot of space. They don't weigh a lot. And it's fantastic if you end up in a pinch and need to get some wires connected or heat shrink something or just whatever. But I paid six, five ninety nine for this or six ninety nine one or the other. This thing here in Canada probably would have cost you about twenty five or thirty bucks. I kid you not. And the last thing that I want to talk about is crossing the border from Canada into the U.S. It's it's becoming more and more of an adventure as it is to uh, just going somewhere shopping. Uh, we do things legally here. Uh, we, we try to abide by the law. Let me start from the beginning. As we roll up to the booth, there's a nice young man sitting in the booth. Asks us a million questions. Some of which I've never been asked before. Or the standard questions is, where are you going? What are you doing? When are you going to be back? Those are all standard questions. I got the, where are you from? How much money do you have in your pocket? Are you stopping anywhere prior to your destination? On your way back to the border, are you stopping anywhere prior to coming here? thought that was a little odd. I guess if we didn't want to try to do things legally, we could just fly to Mexico and walk across the border like everybody else. It seems in this day and age that try to do things, do things right are the ones that end up paying the price in the end. Case in point. If you wish to become a naturalized, they call it naturalized U.S. citizen? I'm not sure what they call it. If you want to become a U.S. citizen, it'll cost you $760. Or, you fly to Mexico, walk across the border, wait a few months, and they'll give you citizenship for free. Your choice. Either follow the rules and get the once over, or... Anyway, I found that all a little bit odd. That wasn't what I had planned today, but... Uh, that's what will happen today. Anyway, see you on the next one. Later.